Hello, my name is Mark Gooden. I'm a CFD engineer with Simutech Group. For this tips and tricks video, I'd like to show you how to set up and solve a linearly expanding mesh model using ANSYS CFX. For this example, I've selected a very simple geometry. This is a rectangular flow section, and what we're doing is moving this green surface in the positive y direction. So it's just a linear motion of uh, the surface and the resulting expanding mesh. So let's take a look at how it, an animation of this looks. This is uh, an animation that was created following the solution. And you can see what's happening on the surface, on this face, the mesh is, is, is undisturbed, undistorted. And what we're doing, we're just really expanding each of the elements uniformly along this length. Before opening up the ANSYS software and working through this setup and solving this model, I'd like to talk in more detail about the different options related to the mesh motion. First, under your Fluid Domain tab, there is a Domain Motion section. And in here, we're going to change the, the Mesh Deformation option is by default is None. We're going to change that to Regions of Motion Specified. And then there's a Displacement Relative To option. And in here, it can either be Initial or Previous Mesh. Previous Mesh is the default. But if you use Initial Mesh, that's appropriate when you have repeating periodic motion such as flapping or flutter. What happens after each period, the initial mesh, your starting mesh, will be recovered. Um, so you, you can solve indefinitely without mesh, the mesh degrading over time. The other option is previous mesh, which is used more often when you have one-off large deformation. You're just moving in one direction one time, not repeating. The issue is when you have repeating motion, the errors can accumulate over time uh, and leading to the possibility of the mesh being folded. Next thing I'd like to touch on is this option related to mesh stiffness and the options available there. Mesh stiffness controls which regions deform to absorb the motion and which remain relatively rigid. So which one elements grow in size and which ones remain pretty much similar in, in, in size or volume. And the goals here often are you want to preserve the, the boundary layer mesh, which requires a higher stiffness near the walls. We don't, don't want those elements to grow as much as we want the elements in the interior of the flow domain. And then a constant value here talks about a large constant stiffness. A B is like a small constant stiffness. It's a constant value. It's constant. The, 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 um, the value itself is, is not important. But looking at the different options available, the default option is increase near small volumes. And you can see that it's one over the volume. There's a stiffness coefficient here, which is used kind of throughout these different, different models. Higher values means high, stiffer mesh, where you would have larger variation between the interior, between the, the larger and smaller elements, the, the growth of those elements. Then there's increase near boundaries. So here, again, if you want to keep good resolution and your inflation layers near, near all the walls, you can use this, this option. There's a blended option where you combine near small volumes and near boundaries shown here where it locally adapts between the, those, those two regions. And the last option is you can specify a constant value. And that can be a constant um, or can, you can use CFX expression language to define a value that varies with you know, time or, or space, however you'd like to use that, 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 uh, uh, that expression. Another important point that I've run across is here this is a much more complex linear motion model. What we, what we have is this kind of Z-shaped region in, in the center here where this is where all the expansion is going to happen. The other two regions remain, remain constant. The motion is linearly here in the upwards direction of this Z-shaped uh, uh, surfaces or volumes. And what happens, the default by default is a mesh displacement diffusion scheme of two um, and it results in something that looks like this. So at the boundaries, or the boundaries between these two different volumes, um, the mesh becomes distorted. You, 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 higher skewness, it really is not what we, we'd hope for. Um, if you change that uh, option, this again, this is under an expert parameter, this mesh dis displacement diffusion option to three, what you do is you, you attain much more orthogonal uh, connections between the different regions. You notice in each of these, the left and the right region here, the mesh remains orthogonal, and then and hence it drives the, the orthogonality um, between in this, this tapered region in between. And to do that, um, as I mentioned, this is an expert parameter that is turned on. It's under a discretization tab, and you toggle on mesh dis displacement diffusion screen, 
by default uh, it's two um, and what we want to do is change it to three and the different options what those mean um, is it's one it uses a central differencing scheme for both the interior and, and boundary uh, elements if it's two it uses positive and definite coefficients on the interior and the central it, it uses central differencing on the boundaries and in three you really get positive definite values both on the interior and the boundary um, and then option four is a blended scheme with central and the boundary what i found is, is option three is often uh, very helpful um, and uh, uh, really cleans up any sort of uh, motion of a uh, say a, a skewed or or non um, uh, region that's not aligned with one of the axes but the motion is not aligned with the, one of the axes Another helpful hint is when you're debugging your mesh motion, so you just want to try it out and see how things look. What you can do is go into the, again, expert parameter area and under the tab model overrides, you can toggle on energies, fluids, turbulence. By default, all of these are set to true. It solves for each of these by default. You just change that over to false, and then what will happen is you'll have the mesh motion will still occur, but you won't. Uh, have the additional time uh, required to solve for the uh, your fluids or, or, or um, thermal simulation. So um, with that, let's open up um, ANSYS software and get started. So I've opened up my ANSYS Workbench project file. And what we're looking at is the project schematic. You see here we have our, our space claim geometry component connected into a CFX analysis system. And I could have done all this within one analysis system, but I kept it separate because I'm planning later to do this similar, do a similar simulation using ANSYS Fluent. So let's jump in. The, the, again, the geometry is very simple, just a rectangular box. So let's jump into meshing. I have that tab opened. Um, under meshing, what I've done, I'll expand out these two sections here, is you notice I've created a sweet mesh um, from this lower, say lower Y face to the upper Y face in, in, in the uh, Y direction. I've put inflation layers around the four corners of our, our rectangular flow domain. And I've put some face sizing here as well, um, about 1.5 millimeters, just to provide some, some resolution on that face. Key thing here is your name selections. I've got a low Y face, uh, which is gonna, going to be stationary. I have the high Y face. That's where we will be applying the moving mesh uh, definition. And our outer walls, and all these outer walls um, are uh, no slip walls, but they will also again be deforming as this high Y face extends. And then I named the whole uh, fluid region um, as well for this particular application. So that's it, pretty simple on the meshing. So let's now open up the CFX setup branch and look at how to create this moving mesh model. So in CFX setup, we have our fluid domain, which comes automatically. What I've done is I've defined some some boundaries. Here we have our high Y face. You can double click to open that up. It's a wall. It's a high Y face. That boundary we have, there's options here for the mesh motion. It can have unspecified, stationary, specified displacement, location, um, and then and down further. What we're going to be doing is, is using specified displacement shown there. We then say uh, it's Cartesian coordinates or cylindrical coordinates is your displacement option. We're going to be linearly increasing the, the distance, the, uh, the displacement, uh, using an expression which I'll talk about in just a minute in the y direction. X and, and Z components are all zero. Uh, it's a not, no slip wall. And again, uh, if we have any relative velocity, it would be to mesh motion. So that's okay. We'll close out of that. The low Y face, that's our opposite face. That is a stationary face. That face is not moving. It's not moving along with the, the extending upper Y face, so that's fine for that one. Uh, the outer walls, here we, um, there are going to be walls. Again, they are, the motion in this case, we're going to use parallel to boundary. So we want that motion, we want those walls to extend, you know, in the only the Y direction. We, um, another option you could use is um, unspecified. As long as the outer boundaries move in the y direction, that would be fine. The more uh, appropriate method uh, is to say uh, parallel to boundaries. We leave that against no slip 
boundary. Um, and so we've got our different boundary conditions defined, the motion of those boundaries defined, I should say. Next thing I'd like to do is let's go look at our expressions. And what I've done here is a very simple expression. Here we've got our, our time that we're going to be moving over. Our end time is two seconds. Our total displacement is 10 millimeters. And what we're going to be doing is linearly increasing that displacement using this expression here. And the expression is t is, is time. So it's our, our current time divided by the end time times our total displacement. So again, it's just a linear variation. And we can plot that. This is really helpful when you have an expression. You can say from 0 to 2 seconds, um, and we hit plot expression. And we can see that we go, indeed, as, as desired, we linearly increase our displacement, you know, just in millimeters from 0 up to 10, um, as, as we had intended. So all that looks good. And we'll go back to our outline. Um, the last thing that I did um, here was uh, let's jump into the, uh, this is important, into our fluid domain. So this is where we really define the motion um, and turn that on. So as I mentioned in the, in the PowerPoint presentation, we're inside our fluid domain. We toggled on from none to regions of motion specified. And then down here under mesh motion model, I usually expand that out. Um, we're going to do motion specified. We're going to use, in this case, um, instead of pre previous mesh, we're just going to, going to do initial mesh. Uh, that way we use the expression and it you know, linearly varies over that, that time. And then I've also chosen, instead of increasing their small volumes, as we have a uniform mesh in the, in the y or axial direction, I'm just going to keep that, <coughs> excuse me, as value. And we'll just have a, a uniform mesh stiffness value. Again, if it's constant, that value is not important. All of all the elements will stretch um, uniformly. So um, in our models tab, there's nothing really special there. Initialization here, as this is a transient model, I'm specifying all the velocities equal to zero um, and pressure just our, at atmospheric pressure. So the basic key settings are all done in this lower panel here. We have regions of motion specified, initial mesh, based on what the expression that I'm using, and then we have a constant mesh stiffness. And then the last thing I'd like to touch on, it's always a good idea. Here we're having, um, this is a transient uh, solution, so I'm not going to be backing up these results. But what I would like to do is, is output at intervals of every two time steps some key variables. In this case, if you click on the three dots, you can select which variables you would like to have written out at those different time points. What this does is allows you to um, reduce the size of these transient results files and focus on the, the variables that you really are interested in for your, um, your model and see how those vary with time. Under the monitor tab, here's where I created a, a couple of expressions. The first expression is the domain length change. And what I was wanted to do here is look at the, the max value of the total mesh displacement in the y direction on this high y face. And to do expressions again, the easy way to do that is click in the y space, white space, sorry, and then you can enter really anything you'd like to. So here I, what I did is I locator based, I did max value, and then from there I picked my variable and I did total displacement in the y direction. And then on my physics location, I did 2D, did my high y face. So it's really easy to just with the right mouse click create these expressions. The other one thing I wanted to touch on is that as we're adding volume here, we're also adding mass. And it's interesting um, to, to look at that variation. So what I did is I added another um, monitor value called the mass at our fluid domain. We can plot that with time. A couple things that I also wanted to touch on um, before we close is looking at the analysis time here we run uh, our time steps is specified here, 0.025 seconds. And this is where I use the expression of end time to control when we stop the simulation. And the other thing I wanted to touch on is uh, if you want to in include expert parameters, to do that, you left mouse click on solver, right mouse, you say insert expert parameters. And this is where we would go in if we want to change our diffusion scheme 
here from two to three, as I mentioned in the PowerPoint presentation, that would be done there. And if we move over a little to the right, the model overrides tab becomes visible. And then we can turn on our energy, our fluids, and our turbulence. These are all on by default, solving these equations. We could turn all those to false if we like. If we want to just focus on the mesh motion, make sure that is doing as we had you know, intended. Um, and then once that's done, then you could turn those back on and actually run the simulation. So um, with that, I think that closes out this tips and tricks video. I hope it's been very helpful. Good luck with your simulations.